Welcome to Truck and Travel. I'm Derek. I'm Cinnamon. And today's video is sponsored by Highfield. Highfield. <laughs> if you're interested in doing what we do and driving one of these trucks for a living, reach out to Highfield Trucking at the link and phone number in the video description. Let them know Truck and Travel sent you. Come on. All right, guys, we wanted to do a video talking about some of the things that we've done with the transport industry. I'm just going to say not trucking, but transport industry. Different niches. Different niches. And, you know, the results that we've got, and everybody's going to get the same results. Everybody's going to get different results. All right. What we first started out with, well, I started out with was RV transport. Um, this was around 2017 when I was doing that. It, I was a non-CDL driver, but I would say CDL drivers aren't going to make much more unless you have a trailer where you can haul multiple uh, RVs, you know, at a time. And it's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel good about it. I don't like it. I, at the time, it was paying like a dollar thirty-four per mile one way, and so you'd have to drive all the way back empty. So. The starting points in like Goshen, Indiana, then you drive all the way over to like Bath, New York, which is hundreds of miles away, and then you drive back empty and you're paying for it, you know. With the amount that you're spending on uh, uh, wear and tear on your vehicle. Oh, geez, oh. Um, Nobody tells you about these things. You you get hotel rooms to stay the night, right? I did. It's yeah. not it's not a good idea. But like I know for the longest people, time I did it, but at the end I was getting burnt out, so yeah. I did. Yeah. And I know a lot of people, um, or some people we've seen, I, I have seen comment where they're like, "We'll just sleep in the in the truck." <laughs> in the no, they said in the trailer. Oh yeah, before, yeah. And Which, you can't do that. You're not like, supposed to, but if you're gonna do it and you take showers on the regular, I would say go for it. You <laughs> might be a little, floor, you know, might be a little bit colder, you know, I wouldn't extend the sides out at all, but you know, this is just me talking. Uh, just the amount, like if you're looking at the profit and stuff, you know, you have all of those miles that you're deadheading, so you're not making anything. Um, and then he would, when he start off the week, he would have to drive from home. So, yeah. you know, the amount deadhead going to Indiana where they have all the, all the, you know, trailers to pick up and then um, travel trailers travel, and, yeah. tra travel trailers and then dropping it off and then deadheading and you would rarely get anything to take back yeah so there yeah. and the thing is that with the companies I was with and, it was rare and when he said that you know like everybody's experience is going to be different uh, one of the things was that one of the companies that he worked for because he tried a couple of different ones um, just to try them out and stuff and I remember one of the companies he actually overheard um, they basically had favorites and they would give this these same people uh, loads back and so since he hadn't been there as long yeah. like he heard them because he asked if there was any you know any loads back They're like no there isn't and then they heard them give it to somebody else uh, and so they showed favoritism, you know, and so that's very hard. And, and something I noticed with the, the one company, which is probably the same one, but if you is from out west, you're more likely to get loads that go out west, which, you know, understandable. I live in Ohio, the neighboring state. They would only, you know, they'd have multi, like tons of travel trailers in the lot but they'd only give you like options for about 10 and there was tons out there. And so sometimes they'd push on uh, Ohio, which is right there. And since they take out a fee, a uh, pooling fee, they call it, to take from the factory to their little parking area, it, um, it really hurt when you take those short runs. So it's just, it's stupid. Yeah. yeah, like if you look at the percentage of what you're getting paid and then how much the pooling fee was, mm -hmm. like it made no sense. Because sometimes they'd only have to pull it from a, um, the place that wasn't that far at no. all. And they were get, making more money that way. Like, it I, is, don't it's, it, I don't know. I don't know. I highly recommend not doing that. So after that, since we had a pickup truck that was pretty Decent. heavy duty, yeah, <laughs> dually, you know, F-350. Derek started looking into Hotshot, um, yep. and if you haven't followed our channel, he actually started Hotshot without me. Uh, yep. Later on, he did talk 
me into it. They um, Well, here, I'll say this. When I first started in Hotshot, that's when uh, trucking was starting to go up. And so the fuel prices were, the diesel prices were starting to come down a little bit. And so things were really good. And then we decided to get our own uh, authority, our own DOT numbers and have our own trucking company. And um, so that's I when we both got our CDLs with yeah. uh, air, no air brake. Like that was a restriction on it. Um, yeah. But we got our CDL A's um, and it was good and stuff. But I think part of the um, struggle with hot shotting is that at the time there wasn't any videos of somebody showing you exactly how to strap it. And well, so, no, that wasn't a problem for me. Well, you were very worried. Oh, because, I always worried. Always. That, I, I know, I, I but did. I remember when you first started, you would you would call your boss and ask him, no. and he was not very helping at all. And he's like, "You just strap it," you know, that, like that he was, wasn't. Yeah, that was when I first started, not when we started our business. Oh yeah, when we started, like he had strapped enough, you know, yeah. by then and stuff. But yeah. the problem you're... when we started our business was we've never dealt with uh, dispatching ourselves, getting loads off of the open load board, you know, and uh, trying to add stuff onto a load that you already have going in the same direction. So it wasn't really something that we was real good with. And the I, market was, the trucking was starting to get a little bad at this time too. So that didn't help either. I will say that, you know, an obstacle when you're trying to find a load and everything is that you can log on. We, we actually use truckstop.com when we did it and you log on and you see like pages and pages of all these loads that they say you put in specifics, you know, this is how much weight, this is how far out we want. And there'd be all these loads yeah. and you'd call them and they'd be like, no, this is for a semi. No, this is for a semi. You know, like you start talking, they're like, oh yeah, yeah. You know, and even if it was a load that we could take, we're like, well, we're a hot shot. And they're like, oh no, no, yeah. we can't do that. Yeah. You know, and so there was a lot of stuff that, um, brokers wouldn't specify in the you know description yeah. that would have saved a phone call so literally just getting a load took forever and we were sitting there waiting we're like okay you know time's ticking by the time we get to the place you know i have to be able to get there in time and yeah. get loaded and there have been there was a couple of close calls i remember yeah so the amount of time to give you an idea how long we i was in uh, rv transport i did a hundred thousand miles with this truck we got it brand new while doing rv transport we had one previous that did a little bit of rv transport with but our 2017 f-350 dually is what we mostly did rv transport with i did a hundred thousand miles doing that so you figure fifty thousand miles roughly was with a travel trailer that i was hauling for rv transport and then hot shot the the transmission went out around 234,000 miles on this truck and uh, we got into something else after that. Yeah, but we, I just want to say before we, we move we are, on, before we move on from Hot Shot, um, we, we went, I went on the road with him and yep. so we were doing it together. So sometimes we take turns driving, yep. but um, sleeping arrangements, awful. There's yeah. no space. Um, if it's bad weather outside, you can't just constantly be outside your vehicle, like you're in the elements and stuff. So you'd be in the truck it, and there's just no space to stand, no cooking, yeah, like cramped. there's just so... It's cramped. Yeah. Um, and we'd have to stay at hotels, so then you have we, that Yeah, cost. we did because I have a hard time, like I have to stretch out because I got a bad leg and... Uh, and he's tall. Yeah. Like, so it's just rough. We're both tall. We're both tall, yeah. And uh, a little space in the truck wasn't wasn't really doing it so uh that was really sucking out a lot of money and then it just didn't make sense just, for us uh money wise yeah. like the profit the wear and tear on the vehicle the, the space we even tried to food prep sometimes yeah. um but we didn't really have like a refrigerator that would last long you know what i mean like you can put it in a cooler like with a ice cooler and stuff from like the, that from the truck stuff yeah. yeah and we i've seen vehicle or uh videos of people who have come up with you know ways to insert like we just didn't do that to the truck though so yeah. and then luckily i was on instagram and i found uh the crafty trucker <laughs> and then i started following them on uh <laughs> YouTube, and then I started interacting with them and talking to them, and they highly They're recommended awesome. that we go with high field trucking for expediting. And this looked like a really exciting world because there's no tarping. They're <laughs> they're in a straight truck, 
There's no pivot point, so it's easier to drive around in these little tight areas and park, and they're going to uh, campgrounds together. I was just gonna say the one thing about X, or about Hotshot that I kept thinking about is that there were some times where I'd pull into a parking lot, and then I'd be like, oh crap, like, you know, cause- Are you gonna would, get out? Yeah, yeah, because it was a, the F-350 and then a 40 foot flatbed, yeah. you know, and so, I feel for semi drivers, <laughs> like yeah. I really do, like that oh crap moment. What, how am I gonna, you know? Yeah, and, and with the flatbed, I'm sure it's the same way for semi trucks. You're going to these really crazy places half the time, like construction sites or where they're building yeah. something. And it's not really ideal for a long setup to go through, let alone hot shot. It's bad enough for a hot shot. Then you got these semi trucks, you know, with the flatbed trailer. It's, it's awful for these guys, the little boys and all that. Yeah. You guys so, do it. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. But you're, so you we saw. found the crafty truckers <laughs> and they're living the life in this straight truck. They like, can stand up in their straight truck can, and cook. And cook. They got a kitchen. And they have their pets with them too. I, it just looks so awesome. And after the whole hot shower deal, I got Cinnamon out of her other career that she was doing great with and got her on the road and we was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> and so she was not really looking forward to this other adventure I had suggested. But I talked her into it though. You have to admit, I do always try like your different ideas. Oh, you, I'm very you go supportive, kicking and screaming. But I do it. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's focus on that. <laughs> She's still here too, you guys. She's still here. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Brown swing. I don't know if they can hear. <laughs> so yeah, there's a dog back there. It just doesn't all of a sudden do like. Yeah. It's a German Shepherd back there, but it's another uh, pet that somebody can take over the road with them. So <laughs> they recommended Highfield, and we talked to Highfield or whatever, and they were they didn't have any openings for us, and so we ended up going with uh, our other fleet owners, uh, Aaron and David. Super nice people. They no longer we love them. <laughs> they no longer have a fleet. They only have like two trucks and they're locked and loaded, they're good to go. And, um, but if it wasn't for them, we would not have gotten into expediting. So we really appreciate Highfield leading us towards them, but that's yeah. why we really high, highly recommend Highfield is because that, that was our first option. And the Crafty Truckers told us so many great things about them and I've gotten to know uh, the owners and I really do like them a lot. And I like their setup, they have a mentorship, you know, that sets you up for success. All right, we'll go ahead and talk about expediting. <laughs> I remember like, I don't know if it was our first or second load, but we were fist bumping and it said we're doing the thing. Oh, we were excited. Like just like once we moved in there. It was so much easier. Cause here's the thing with hot shotting, we actually had to pay somebody to go feed our cats and, and scoop their cat litter and take care yeah, of them every day yeah. because we couldn't take them out in the pickup truck with us. So, so once we learned that- This ain't a normal problem that people have. Oh, I know, but- The, the thing was making money. Okay, sorry. It was so much easier you making- You know if I start talking about cats, I can go all day. Making money <laughs> uh, and it was so much easier getting loads cause we went, we were, FedEx custom critical independent contractors. And so we was using their load board and it was so much easier oh, yes. to deal with uh, dispatch, you know, cause you're not trying to, negotiating loads is so much easier. And even the loads straight off the load board were paying so much better. And the dollars to the miles or whatever was making sense, literally. I think it's funny because like when we first started expediting, we saw this one load uh, that we took and we thought it was a great rate because it was so much better than hot shot and stuff. Yeah. And then like later on, we I think we, we, looked, learning, we looked back at it like four oh, years later, four or five years later. And we're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we took it for that load. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's like our first load, I want to say it was around $700. It was a short run, but it was at least $2 a mile. But for the day, you try to, you know, make more money per day. Yeah. But it was, <laughs> it's pretty cool though. I mean, no regrets on going that way out of all of the things we've done. Do you want me to talk about something oh. else I tried? So Cinnamon tried something else. Go ahead, Cinnamon. This is more of a recent thing she tried out. Uh, so I actually tried, I had to think about what it was called. We, they call it gig, gig work, whatever, yeah. DoorDash. Yeah, so I did DoorDash um, and I did Uber. And? And uh, Instacart. Instacart, okay. Uh, Instacart was awful, like, cause our, our um, 
our Meyer that we have here, the grocery store, like is was going through renovations, and so they actually have a thing listed where it tells you what aisle and what what shelf and everything. Nothing matched up, yeah. and you have a certain amount of that, time. That's just and, a side note. Okay, what, sorry. But anyways, one thing that so, would say I would say that sucked that you would always complain about is it would say one item, but it was like 15 things. Oh yeah, it. it um, I think it said 11 items or, or or 20 some items but ended up being like over 100 yeah so, was, so in your mind you're like oh only 11 items it took me over an hour like so yeah. basically they run your butt off and yeah. so when you're looking at your your how much you're making per hour like i would i would it would be um an amazing day if you made um 100 bucks 15 dollars an hour okay. if, yeah. and that's not count, counting all the fuel you have to spend uh, wearing out your starter because oh, you yeah. get to a place, you turn off your vehicle, yep. you go and pick it up, you get back in your car, you start your car, yep. you drive to the place, you turn it off, you go drop it off, you get back in your car, start it up again. And if you're doing it during the summer and it's hot, you are so freaking hot because your AC, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. You get into a hot car and, and you like- It's so hard to schedule a door dash. You have to be a, what do you call them? Top dasher. You gotta be a top dasher to be able to schedule whenever you want. And in order to stay a top dasher, you have to accept loads that are paying crap. Like they yeah. had, uh, they had this one where it's seven miles, and they only want to pay you five bucks, but it goes out of the way, so you're really having to come back to the place. So, so it's really miles. fourteen miles yeah. for five dollars. Yeah, stupid. Like, and it's it's just awful. Like, yeah. So you gotta be. Bad. You gotta, what is it? Accept about seventy percent of the last hundred. I Is forget what it was. I, it was around there, but like they yeah. kept sending awful ones, and so I, I yeah. just have to accept it. And then like there's some where they don't tip you like at all. Yeah. Like they, you get the little amount that DoorDash gets you, but then there's zero tip from the, the place. But then it actually you actually have to wait for it, and then it, it takes up, um, or uh, by the time you deliver and everything, it took up like 20 minutes of an hour, and you only made two bucks. Yeah. So if the trend would be, then that would be six bucks for an hour of work. And yeah. you know what I mean? So it just, it was not good. And Uber, you could barely get anything. Well, at least in our area, it wasn't busy at all. So I couldn't double stack or dirty stack or whatever they call it. Yeah. So I did not like it at all. So. Here's a little white load. It's only hanging about a foot over on each side, but. I think if you're just like a couple inches over on each side, it's still considered oh, yeah. a wide load. So he's yeah. making that money. <laughs> Let's uh, go ahead and go inside. We'll show you the Halloween decorations here. This place usually decorates for the holidays. So oh, that's it's so fun. cool. <laughs> All right, Cinema, let's go in there. It's starting to get cold now. Um, yeah, right. Derek kind of you, scooted you, closer to me because I was shivering. Yeah, I can feel her shaking. So what do you think it is right now, Cinema? Oh my gosh, I didn't even look. Probably 50s. Yeah, it's pretty right? cold. It's windy and it's cold. So if there's like wind, the no wind and no sun that. being out, like that's what makes it colder. Yeah. They even had little stickers on their coolers. <laughs> That's where the tree is during Christmas. Oh, is it? Yeah. Huge spider. That's so funny. You gotta show us around cinema. Yeah, sorry, I'm just gonna get a sucker over here. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I did not. I never, I don't get suckers, so that's... I just wanted to butterscotch one and I was looking <laughs> Oh gosh, wait. Now you gave it time to reload. I know. <laughs> okay. Man, that's crazy. I got a question once, so I don't know what it is. <laughs> they got big spiders. I'm scared to go near all this stuff. <laughs> Oh, oh, gross. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Mm. Sometimes they'd have a skeleton in there. Oh, that's creepy. 
That's very creepy. Yeah. Please tell me they don't do anything. I don't know. I can't tell you. <laughs> Does that remind you of like, we'd go past the trees and they'd have like those huge spider web things? Do you remember that? No. Like along the roads and stuff? It was like Georgia or something? Yeah, it okay, has, yeah. Um, it's actually from a some kind of a worm. I forget what it's called though. This thing goes off, I know that, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> That's a little morbid. <laughs> Oh my gosh, do you think that thing goes off? I don't know. I bet you it does. Okay, that's not as bad. No. That's so funny. It's so mean. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, happy Halloween to everyone. We should take a picture in that. Go ahead, Cinnamon. <laughs> this is fun. I love how they always decorate for the different things. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. I hope everybody has Attention a wonderful Halloween and get some candy maybe. Shower one. But not too much He's candy, right, available. Derek? Yep, not too much. <laughs> does this thing do anything? I bet you it does. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, the greatness of the old seeing Zoltan is summoned. Behold. Aha! You have a wish in your heart. It is strong. Do not fret. Your wish will be granted. <laughs> 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 Fake news. <laughs> That's fun. Fun or creepy? Um. Oh, look at that crap. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. God bless you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. Flip flop wear. God bless you guys. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you next time. Bye. On to the next one. On to the next one. <laughs> see you. <laughs> Adios. Oh, no, I didn't practice. Dang it. <laughs> Hasta luego. Hasta mañana. <laughs> you know you meant that. Ciao. <laughs>248,000 miles. See you about.